Welcome to Rosebud Homestead. Today we're going to do something really fun. Most of us know all about canning with the ball system, with the jar, the lid, and the ring. But how many of us have ever done canning with WECK jars? W-E-C-K, WECK. Today we're going to can some cherries in WECK jars using water bath canning, and we'll get right to it in just a moment. So let's review the ball system for just a moment. It consists of a jar, and these jars come in several sizes, and then a lid. This is a metal lid, which is usable one time for the canning process. The inside of the lid is coated with plastic, and then it has the sealing compound around the edge. Now some people object to this plastic being next to their food. It no longer contains the bad chemicals that it once did, and so it is safe, and actually it doesn't bother me at all, but some people are concerned about that, and so they need to address that within their own families. And then the third piece, of course, is the lid. And we've, most of us have canned enough that we know the process here. This is a WECK jar, W-E-C-K. These are manufactured in Germany. I have admired these jars for years. They are so darling, cute, whatever you want to say. They come in, in such lovely shapes. This is a tulip jar and it holds just under um, a cup, about seven ounces. All of the measurements, since this is a European canning system, are in milliliters. And so this is 220 milliliters. So it's just under a cup. Now, the WEC system has been used very successfully in Europe for over 90 years. Most canning is done using WEC jars all over Europe. So here is their system. It consists of two little clips that hold the lid in place. And you need to be sure that you keep a hold of those clips or they go flying. And it has a pure glass lid, no plastic here whatsoever. A lot of people love this feature because you can look right down in your food and see whether or not the food is spoiled. And then the sealing compound is not attached, rather it is a separate gasket. And that little gasket just lines up right underneath the lip of the lid and then the jar. And jars come in all different sizes and shapes. The WEC website is, from my perspective, the best place that with the best price to purchase their jars unless you live in a large metropolitan area and you can find them on sale at a local um, store. But once you get your food inside the jar, you just place the lid on the top, making sure that the edges are all aligned, and then you just pop the clip in place. Now, there's a technique to putting this clip in, and I'm going to show it several times today, but I'm going to talk you through it today. So this little flat lip needs to go flat against the lid. And so to do that, you have to sort of turn it this way, put your finger right here and apply some pressure, and then pull this part down so it snaps into place. And now those are flush with the, with the top of the lid, and these are clipped up under the lip right here. So this, if it were full of food and had been um, sanitized, would be ready to put in uh, either the a water bath canner or the pressure canner as well. So I'm gonna set these two things aside and we're going to do some canning. It is late July, cherries are on, we got these on a wonderful buy. I have half liter WEC jars, so this is slightly more than a pint, and I'm going to tell you some things that I had to adjust to as I learned how to can with these. Um, the first thing that they suggest is that you pour a little bit of the syrup, since we're doing cherries, I want to talk about how to can cherries for just a moment. There's practically nothing easier in the fruit category uh, for water bath canning than cherries. 
When I was a little girl, I helped my mother can every year, oh, 100, 200 quarts of cherries. Now, because we had a really large family and my mother was an efficiency expert, we did it the fastest and easiest way. So we pulled out the stems and, well, we washed everything first and examined them to be sure there were no rotted spots. Then we pulled out the stems, we put them in the jars, she poured whatever amount of sugar she wanted in and then filled that up with boiling water. Now, I do that same thing today up to the sugar. Um, USDA no longer recommends to put dry sugar in at all. Rather, I have prepared a, a very light syrup. It's a 10% syrup, which is about the same percentage as fruit juice. And so essentially, this is like canning these cherries in their own juice. I use nine cups of water and one cup of sugar, and it's warm over there on the stove. So these cherries, you can either pit them or leave them with the pits in. I leave pits in, it's quicker, it's easier. If you pop the pits out, then you need to rinse these in citric acid to prevent them from browning. So the first thing is to put a little bit of syrup, about a half a cup of syrup in each of the jars. So here's our syrup. And I'm just going to put a little bit of syrup in the bottom of each one of these. And these jars have been washed with hot soapy water and left right here to drain dry. Now, because they're going to be processed in the water bath canner, actually it's going to be in my pressure canner, but I'm using the water bath method with my pressure pot, because the rack that is in my water bath canner doesn't fit these fat jars. So I'm using my pressure canner, but I'm going to water bath can in it. And so these are filled with about a half a cup of the syrup. The next thing that happens is, I'm going to put the cherries in. Now because these cherries uh, will be processed for 35 minutes, and that is according to the USDA. Now when using WEC jars, because the volumes are different than what the USDA has tested in their laboratories, you have to sort of figure out how you might need to adjust the um, processing time. Now um, for our elevation, which is at 5,000 feet here on the Colorado Plateau, USDA says 30 minutes for pints or quarts. Now this is half a liter, which is right between a pint and a quart. So I'm good with 35 minutes, so that's what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to drop the cherries in and um, it is important that we leave headspace here. I learned that the hard way. I didn't break anything, but I had some that would not hold the seal because I had put uh, too many pair, uh, I practiced with cherries and I put them too high in the jar and some of them prevented the seal. These are beautiful cherries. We found a buy one, get one free situation at a local store. So that was and not one cherry, but one big bag of cherries. So this amount of cherries will be just perfect for two servings, one for Jim and one for me. And that way we won't have to leave any uneaten ones in the refrigerator. Oh, that one is a reject. Okay. Okay. The next step is then to fill it up, each jar fill up to a half an inch, leaving a half inch head space. So we will do that. These jar openings are so large, I don't even need to use my funnel for this one. I might for something else, but certainly not this time. 
Now this syrup is warm. Now this is another important thing when bottling with wet jars, and that is that um, when we get ready to take these out to the canner, the water in the canner, I do not have preheating the way I do, that may be a little bit full, the way that I do with um, pressure canning. Because the jar and the food need to uh, heat up at the same time. So now, the next thing I do, I have the gaskets. We have to um, put the gaskets in boiling water and boil them for about two minutes, two to three minutes. And then once they've boiled for two to three minutes, you can just leave them in the warm water. And so here they are right in this pan, and they are ready to go. So I'm just going to fish them out. The water, I'm sure, is still quite hot. And I'm going to just slip one in the little space underneath the lip of the lid. And then you invert it, pop it over like this. And then we will now, I'm going to move this one out so you can perhaps see it better. I'm going to attach the clip. And that is finger here and run it around. And then opposite, on the other side of the jar, finger here and run it around. All right, now this one is ready for the canner, just exactly like this. I have some things to tell you about what happens in the canner that startled me because I'm used to the ball system, but it turned out to be perfectly okay. Now my hands are very clean. Because these are going to process for 30 minutes, I did not need to sanitize them. Um, I just washed them. No, there are too many in here. There's too, too many. And they will sanitize for the 30 minutes. Anything that you process for over 10 minutes, you don't have to sanitize the jars. Okay, there's that clip in place and then opposite. Okay, so there's two ready to go out to the canner. And here's our third. And you need to be sure that you give a visual check to be sure after you have attached the clips. Actually, I'm going to slide that clip a little bit over here so that I don't get the tongue in the opposite one. You need to be sure and give it a visual that that gasket is completely flat all the way around. One of the errors that I made that caused a jar not to seal was when I put the the clip on, it bunched the gasket up a little bit in that spot and it didn't make a good seal. So now I check all the way around to make sure that that seal, that the gasket is completely flat all the way around. And it takes a little bit of getting used to it first, but I'll tell you, I really love these jars. Uh, one of the downsides is that they are quite expensive, um, but like I said, I shopped around, and for me, when I shop online, since that's our best option where we live, the best place was the, the WIC site. Okay, now, another startling thing that happened because everything is so visual with all of this glass, I watched it as I put these down in the water and the water began to warm up. It started, but I could see bubbles coming out from the side edges, like right from right here out, and they'd bubble up to the top of the water. And I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't get the um, clips fastened in place good enough. So I took it out and redid the lid all over again, reclipped it, put it back in, 
and then it did the same thing. I took it out about three times before. You know, I'm pretty scientific, but boy, sometimes I can be slow. What I realized was that I was actually seeing something that I said in an earlier video uh, about pressure canning, and that is that the inside of the contents are going to boil. And when liquid boils, what does it do? It gives off steam. The steam has to escape out the jar. Well, of course it does. And so with WEC jars, we can actually see it. It happens to every jar that we ever put in any kind of a canner. It happens with the ball system. We just don't see it. Um, but those bubbles come out and the air escapes and it's replaced on the inside with the steam. And then after we take them out, another thing that happens is that the boiling temperature on the inside um, changes and it boils and some of the juice comes out the side and drips down. Now that has sometimes happened to me with the ball system as well, but <clears throat> it was startling to see it. I thought, oh boy, that's not gonna seal. But it, it quit completely. It, it, oh, maybe I lost a teaspoonful of liquid or so, and then it quit. And then I don't touch these for several hours until they are completely cold to the touch. Now, how do we know when a wet jar is sealed? These are solid glass. They don't have that little button in the middle that pops up or pops down to tell us when something is vacuum packed. So there are two indicators. There is a physical indicator, um, and um, actually there's two, and that is this little tongue looking thing. When the, the little tab right here, when it's completely vacuumed, that tongue is gonna to be pointing down. And then the second thing is when it's completely cold, you can remove, you have to remove the clips. These wet jars are stored with the clips off. And that's very important, I'll explain that in a second. But with the clips off, then you should be able to pick up the jar by only the lid. And, oh, we've got rain, that's what I'm hearing. Oh, okay. I thought I had something boiling on the stove. And if we can pick it up without the jar falling back down to the towel, then we have a good vacuum. So I'm gonna show you that. Hold on just a minute. So here is one of my practice jars. Notice that the little tongue is pointed down, just like that, so you can compare. And then this one has no clips, and I can pick it up by the lid only, and it holds. And that shows that this has a really good seal. All right, we're gonna move out now and put these in the canner, and I'll show you what I had to do to my jar lifter to get it to work with these wick jars, wick jars. We're outside now at my canning station. It is pouring. We're so thankful for this rain. We've waited for weeks. We might even be interrupted by thunder. But let's put these last two jars in. And remember, I'm just going to water bath these. And so five fit perfectly in this canner. And I actually could do a second row if I wanted to, but right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm only gonna do these. So the fire is not on on these, but we're gonna turn the fire on and then bring it to a boil. And I just put those in with my hands. I'll show you how I adjusted the um, jar lifter when we're getting ready to lift them out. So we're gonna turn the fire on and we will start timing for 35 minutes once this comes to a full boil. And then we'll bring you back when we take them out and we're just gonna put them right over here on the table and let them cool for several hours. So we will see you in just a little while. So it has been 35 minutes of boiling time. Now, in a water bath counter, you don't even really need to put the lid on. The lid helps uh, the water so that it does not evaporate too fast. But uh, you can just, as long as the jars are submerged in boiling water, you really don't need a lid. So I have positioned these jars down in there, the last two, so that I can reach. Now what I have done with my jar grabber is that I've turned it upside down 
and these two wooden pieces or plastic probably will reach under the lip of those jars and then I can lift them out. However, it takes both hands so I'm going to very carefully move these over here to the rack where the other ones are and then I'll get the last one. And these haven't leaked like my other ones did. So that's a good thing. Now, one thing that I'm kind of worried about, and I'll just confess right now, I forgot a very important step that when we can with glass, regardless of whether it's water bath or pressure canning, we always, always wipe the rims of the, um, the top rim of the jar with a damp paper towel. I totally forgot to do that. So I'm a little worried. I'm hoping that that's not going to interfere with them sealing. Now it is after 7.30 in the evening here. And so we're just going to leave these out here on this table on the rack all night long. We'll come back in the morning and give them the test to see whether or not they have sealed. So we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. The cherries are right here. I just brought them into the house and now is the moment of truth. We're going to remove the clips and then I will attempt to lift each one up by the lid to see if we have a seal. Now I noticed last night after I, I checked them several times um, before we went to bed and all of the little tongue tabs are pointed down. So in spite of the fact that I forgot to wipe the rims I'm a little bit hopeful that everything is going to be okay this morning. So here we go. Now to remove these clips, I just do the opposite. I put my finger right here so it's not going to go anywhere. And I lift it up and over, and then the clip is very easily removed. Um, the first few times that I tried to remove clips, I flipped them clear across the room. So I've learned how to do that, and I've just shared that with you. Okay, I'm nervous. All right, here goes. I'm just going to lift just by the lid. Notice I have it on a towel in case it crashes down. All right, here we go. Oh, yay. Okay, that's great. Okay, whew. so there's one out of five, so hopefully the others will be the same. Since I'm new to this, I still get a little bit nervous about it. Now, we will leave the clips off. The reason that we leave the clips off is because if any microbiological microbiolo activity begins inside the jar, what's going to happen is the growth of microorganisms causes a gas, the gas will expand and break the seal, and it will no longer do this. And so before we would eat these, I would test that again. It's the same reason why USDA suggests that we do not store the rings on the jars in the ball canning system. Now we do store our rings on the, on the jars just because I don't have any other place to put them, but we loosen them. And that way, if a lid is going to break its seal, then the, the uh, ring will not be holding it down in place. All right, so I'm gonna set this one over here and bring another one over. All right, here we go. Finger in place, flip it around, and test. Ah, yes, now notice how nicely these stack we could probably safely stack these three high very easily. All right, here's the next one. Two out of five, so far so good. Wonderful, three out of five. And okay. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Whew. Here we go. Last one. Uh-oh, I heard maybe a little pop when I pulled that loose. Oh, good. Okay, now I want to demonstrate to you how to open these jars. I'm not actually going to open one. But if, um, notice all, the, all these little tongue things are, are pointed down. So all you do to break the seal on this and open it is just to pull this little tab it doesn't take much strength at all. You just pull it, that breaks the seal, and then the lid can come right off. So I want to talk for just a moment about a couple of the differences between the ball canning system 
and the WEC canning system. Now, I went on uh, online last night to check more prices on the WEC jars. And um, by the time that the WEC company adds shipping to their jars, um, it is pretty close to the prices that are listed on Amazon. And it took them three weeks, the WEC company, to get these to me. And I was so anxious and excited. So I think I am going to order some more, I know that. But I think that I will order them through Amazon, even if I have to pay a dollar or two more, just so that I can get them in two days. Um, another thing, we Americans are known for our, our practicality. We like to do things the easy way, the sure way, and that's exactly what the ball canning system is. But you know, every once in a while, I like to get just a little bit fancy. And, and this um, process of canning in these beautiful jars has sort of satisfied that um, desire in me to have something a little bit beyond the ordinary with, um, with my canning. Now, these jars are thicker. I've actually dropped one from about this high on my granite countertop, and there wasn't a problem with it at all. So this is good equipment. It is, um, certainly has been used for many, many years by Europeans. And for me, it gives kind of a fancy touch to my canning. Now, I am not going to convert completely over to WEC jars. I'm going to stay with the ball canning system uh, for, for most of my canning. But for a small percentage, when I want to get fancy, I'm going to use WEC jars and I'm ordering some more. So I hope this has been useful to you and um, I've certainly loved sharing this with you. So join us again next time. I think our next video um, with, with WEC jars is going to be uh, plum jam. We have a plum tree that's loaded, and so in just a few weeks we'll be doing a video on plum jam. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you for our next video.